All right. Hi, and welcome, everybody. This is Pamela from Magella Digital, and I'm here today with David Garcia Ruiz from Trust Your Brand. His website is trustyourbrand.co.uk. And we're going to chat today about SEO and why it's important and what you should take care of. Now, David creates content in English and Spanish that helps people during their customer that helps people during their buying journey. His work is precise, timely, and straight to the point. How do I know? We've been working together for years, and he has been working quite a he has been helping quite a number of our clients grow their own companies. He creates content strategies. He does SEO translation, multilingual SEO, and also trans creation. In short, he is someone that I deeply trust in when it comes to SEO, and I'm so looking forward to having you here today and talking a little bit more about SEO. Welcome, David. Hello, welcome. Thank you, Pamela, for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here, and yeah, looking forward to to share some thoughts about SEO and content creation to help people who may want to start today and don't know where to start from, and yeah, that's a conversation for them today. Awesome. So before we dive right in, tell us how did you get started with SEO? So yeah, my background is in languages and translation. So back in 2014, I was working with um, with a digital agency and they needed to do some keyword research in Spanish. So that was my first point of contact with the SEO world, if you want to call it. And it happened that in the digital marketing agency, they had um, a woman who was born in maternity leave. So they said to me, look, we need a hand with our multilingual clients who need SEO support in Spanish as well as in other languages. So can you help us with that? And that's how I started uh, in the SEO world well and working with this digital company back in 2014. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. So it's been nine years now. Yeah, nine years. Yeah. <laughs> Time passes. That's crazy. So, I mean, we sometimes get clients that, you know, are super excited to like start with Google ads or meta ads or any kind of ads, but where like the website still needs a lot of imp like improvement and what we have seen is that for many of them who are good in, let's say, wellness or in e-commerce and so on, SEO seems like this really big puzzle and jungle mm -hmm. that is super hard to see through and to get started with. So where would you recommend people start off when it comes to SEO? So I would say before starting with SEO as such, you need to have a decent website. And when I talk about a decent website, it's a decent, it's a decent website that at least ticks the main boxes. So for example, your website needs to be mobile friendly. People need to be able to browse your website on mobile phones because the likelihood is that you are getting most of your visitors from mobile phone devices. Uh, you need a website that is fast according to Google criteria for those users who are uh, browsing your website from mobile phones. But I often find that um, business owners in the website is okay because they browse their website on their laptop, but when it comes to their mobile phone, if you browse the website on the mobile phone, you can tell that it takes three seconds for the homepage to uh, upload, and that's really bad for, for Google, okay? So basically, you need to, um, yeah, work with your developers from a start. You don't need to create a, a website from scratch with customized uh, HTML language or anything like that. You can use a WordPress theme, but you need to make sure that it is light, that you don't have massive hero images on the homepage that takes a lot of time, time to, to load. You don't have videos that are not really mm, friendly when it comes for, for mobiles and for SEO in general. And you have a fast hosting that is going to have positive effects when those um, internet users are, are mm, browsing on your website. Again, the homepage is the page that often uh, gets more of the, of the visitors and is often the page where people put a massive hero image that gives you a very bad uh, report when it comes to this 
um, signals that Google takes into account when it says, okay, this website is good from a technical point of view. Is it fast? Is it mobile friendly? So you really need to have a website that is good enough so we can start working in terms of, F of SEO. Of course, uh, technical SEO experts can give you advice on how to improve these websites, but the ideal scenario is that you work with a developer who has a basic understanding of how to make a website um, SEO friendly. So then you don't have to go back to the website and redo the whole website if you want to call it. So my advice as well is if you are trying to do create a website uh, or you are trying to revamp your website at this moment is try to get your SEO team or SEO team freelance or whoever they may be, try to um, bring them to, to the conversation with the developers because it's better if um, your SEO, um, your SEO um, experts help you from the start with your website. So if you're revamping your website, they help you to shape that revamp, right? Than just doing your own thing and after say, oh, can you help me? Because then the SEO team has to go and um, make changes or um, coordinate with the developer to, to implement changes. So yeah, yeah. actually it's a lot of additional work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, developers don't need to be SEO experts and SEO experts don't need to be developers. But yeah, both both of them need to have some basic understanding of how, how things work to be able to work better together and to deliver better results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you touched on two important aspects. On the one hand, who to work with, and then there are quite some kind of like metrics by which to measure ones like SEO performance. So if I'm in the very beginning, you mentioned website speed, right? What are some tools that I could use or how can I find out how fast my website is? Like kind of like do a quick check so that I know a little bit more what I'm working with. Yeah, so there are many different tools available. And for example, some of them um, simulate um, your website visitors uh, visiting the website and it gives you a report of the actual experience for the users and there are others that focuses more on, on technical aspects such as how long does it take for the um, main image of your website to load okay so there are tools such as screen frog or site valve that can help you with that but again if you if you don't have idea about seo it's quite hard to know how to use these tools. I mean, you can use it, but then the things that they report, you have to implement them on your website. So it doesn't really, you can know what the problem is, but then you know, you need to fix it. So this tool that tells you the problem and very basic guidance about what you can do. But usually you're gonna need some insights to know yeah, this is exactly what you have to do because you may not be able to translate the instructions into the action steps that you need to take, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So if I'm at the very beginning and I know I need someone, but I have very little idea of SEO, how would you recommend people going about actually, you know, getting that first person to help them with SEO? What should they look out for? Yeah, well, um, I would say when it comes to SEO, you have two options. You go with a freelance consultant or you go with, uh, with an agency. And I personally would look at reviews, whether you're working with a, with a freelance or with, a, with an agency. And usually it's helpful to know whether this company or this consultant has worked with businesses within your industry. Because often you find that um, yeah, the strategy behind a law firm and the strategy behind an email um software company is going to be very different so you have experience you are a step ahead because you know exactly what you're dealing with you know the things that um may help a website in a particular industry to rank better perhaps uh, for some websites it works very well to have glossaries because there are a lot of queries that come from people searching for specific terms and for other websites it doesn't have it doesn't make sense to have a glossary because it's not going to help the website so that would be my two tips, reviews and, and yeah, whether they have experience working within your industry. And of course, you know, I always trust uh, as much as reviews, people who recommend 
um, recommend me to other professionals. Yeah. Absolutely. So one of the important aspects that you mentioned already is content creation, right? So what's the best way to approach content creation? Because, you know, there's a lot of content out there and oftentimes it may also seem a little bit overwhelming with like where to actually start. So my, the place to start, I would say that it is to create content that answer the questions of your audience. So now how do you find what your audience is asking? You can go to Facebook groups that are related to your business and you can see what people are asking from. For example, how can I convert a PDF into a web document or whatever it may be. Um, similarly, you can go to Quora, you can go to LinkedIn groups, you can just uh, find what people are talking about even on Facebook posts. And from there, you can get ideas to create content. So basically, right then starting with a keyword search tool such as SEMrush and trying to find what people are searching from, it's easier if you go to your audience and see what the conversations are about and try to create content that answer those, those questions. You can also, of course, talk to your marketing team, to your sales team and say, oh, what are people asking on the phone when they, when they call to, to inquire about our products? And you can, of course, also um see what your competitors are doing so for example if you have a direct competitor and they have a blog post about a particular subject and you don't have a blog post about that particular subject they may have it there for a reason so if you think that the reason they have it makes sense for you try to create the same the same content for the same topic mm -hmm. however make it better so you can outrun your competitor so yeah, that would be that would be the the place to start. Yes, rather than trying to, yeah, what can I write about? It's very easy. Just what are my customers asking? What are they interested in? And how can I answer those questions? And how can I be the person that they're going to choose uh, to have their questions answered? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Often, mm -hmm. Sorry. No. Often you will find that. All these different techniques can work together. So for example, you can get um, the questions that people are asking on, on a Facebook group and you can have these questions pass through a keyword search tool. And this keyword search tool can give you insights of what is the best way to target those questions that people are talking about. So all these things can work together. So you can take information from Quora, from Facebook groups, from your marketing team, use keyword research tools so it all works together but the main goal that you have and uh, need to have in your mind is how do i answer the questions that my customers are asking would you say that any of these different tools and methods that you mentioned it too is more important than others if they are more they're better you said yeah, so any of the tools that you mentioned, are they, is there any one in particular that's better or more important than the others? Um, well, I would say that the most important thing is also to understand where your business is at this moment. So if you have a new website and you are starting from, from scratch with SEO, um, it's very unlikely that you are going to be able to outrank competitors who are well established that have websites that are very strong. So for example, if you are starting out, you may want to answer very specific um, questions that your users may have. And this in the SEO hard hergon, this is called um, long tail keyword. It's long tail because it's many keywords that make the keyword. So if you want to target a keyword like that, you may, you may need a specific tool. So for example, there's one called People also asked and that gives you very specific queries. <clears throat> and yeah, if you are looking at simply more like a commercial, commercial keywords that can bring like transactional traffic to your website, you may use other, other, other tools such as SEMrush that actually provides you with the intent that, um, that each keyword has. So again, it all depends on, on where your website is. But then um, again, the idea for me would be today to say that you don't even need a tool to start writing. Okay. If you see clearly that your customers 
are talking about something, let's say you are a piano company and you know that your customer are asking about how can I move a piano? You don't need any tool to write about this because you know they're asking about it, they're talking about it. It's very likely that if you type on Google how to move a piano, you are going to have already blog posts about it because it's, it's a question people are going to have. So my, my, my advice would be, if you are not an SEO expert, you don't even need an SEO tool to start doing SEO today. You just need to answer to a question. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people also, especially those that, you know, maybe gotten very big very quickly on Instagram, but don't really have like, you know, a website or a business model behind that, like social media comments can give you a lot of input and ideas about what people are asking for and what they want more, right? So let's say I've started off, I have created my first blog post or articles, right? And then I start getting into really showing an interest that my content actually ranks well, right? What can I do to make my content rank better once it's already created? Okay. So when you are creating your first piece of content, um, especially if you are doing it yourself, it may not make a lot of sense. It may be just random content, random questions that you're answering. But at some point, it is very useful if you try to target specific uh, topics that your customers are talking about. So for example, um, if you are doing uh, email marketing, you may want to target uh, some customers who are talking about email marketing in general and others about email marketing autom automation, yeah? Automated email marketing. So then when you are creating content, you always have in your mind that the piece of content that you are creating is within one of these particular topics. So the idea is that you are able to identify different topics, different keywords that are very important for your business. So it can be email marketing, email marketing automation, um, you may even do marketing automation, um, et cetera, et cetera. So once you are able to identify those topics that are very important um, for your business, Every time you create a piece of content, you have to ask yourself how does this piece of content work within my main topics, the main keywords that are very important for me because those are the products that mm -hmm. I sell. So I would say that you need a strategy that always uh, tends around increasing the authority of those main keywords which you may not get on page one in a long time because they're going to be very hard. Imagine email marketing or CRM or pianos. It's going to be hard to run for those. But when you create content that supports those main keywords, mm -hmm. you're going to be ranking for a specific, um, a specific queries, such as how to move a piano. And that's going to help eventually for keywords such as buy a piano or second hand piano to rank well. So I would say, um that's how you need to um what you need to do to be able to make your content rank better always ask yourself why am i creating this piece of content how does it work in the in the universe of um my website in general and of course when you have a strategy you may need uh you may ask a content strategist like myself to say okay can you can you just design a strategy so we can target uh, our main keywords in the best way. Once you have a strategy, you also need writers who can who can write this content. And often you will find that uh, there are very good writers out there. They can even be amazing. They can even write for um, online newspapers. But when it comes to SEO um, content, they don't have experience and they don't tick the boxes that you need to tick when creating content. So uh, when you create a piece of content, you need to tick some boxes um, mm, about on-page SEO. So you need make you need to make sure that your page is is SEO friendly, basically. And there are just some basic basic boxes that you need to tick. And of course, our strategies will give guidance on how to do that but if you work with a writer who knows how to do it it's much easier because the person doesn't need to learn how to do it and again it may be the case that 
you don't have the budget for a strategist and a copywriter and you may just choose a copywriter because at the end of the day you need the content and it's ideal if you were with someone who is going to create content that is SEO friendly. So let's say I have someone who is writing content. Let's say I hired a copywriter, right? How can I myself know if that content is actually SEO optimized or not? Okay, so <clears throat> there are some some things that uh, are obvious, for example. So let's say if you see that there are internal links on the on the page. Internal links are links that take you from one page of your website to another page. If there are internal links and those internal links uh, make sense in the context that they are and they take you to another page, that's a good sign that the copywriter may be using those internal links for a reason. The reason is internal links help your website rank better in general because you let Google now that your content is related and one page support other page. So that can be a sign that um, a writer is um, producing SEO friendly content. Another sign may be that there are white spaces on, on the page. So if you go to, um, to good content online, uh, you're gonna see that paragraphs are short, two or three lines, there's white spaces, you don't get overwhelmed when you're reading the, the page. So that can be a good sign. They are using short, short sentences because that's how um, people can digest the content, that's what Google likes as well. They may be using bold letters to highlight the most important words in a particular sentence again, because that's helping Google and readers understand what the, what this content, sorry, what this content is about. So there are many there are many signs that you can look at, but those are very obvious. If you go to a page and it's just a big chunk of text with no internal links, no structure, no bullet points, it's like this is not going to be easy to read. If it's not easy to read for you, it's not easy to understand for Google either. So it's yeah. pretty much it works in the same way. Yeah, those are two great points that are, I would say, very easily recognizable for anybody, right? Except you're working in research. Then you just write sentences that go, <laughs> that span paragraphs, right? Um, and, awesome. Yeah, of course, you can take it a step, a step further, you know, there are, again, specific tools that gives you like a mark. Excuse yeah. myself for a second. Yeah. Sorry, one second, I'll be right back. All right, excuse me, one always gets parcels delivered at the <laughs> worst possible time, so we'll cut this out from the recording. <laughs> um, all right, okay, so back to the topic. Yeah, so I was saying that, of course, there are, there are tools that, um, that can give you a mark of how good your content is. So for example, one of these tools is called Clear Scope. And then, yeah, you put a piece of content there, it's going to tell you, okay, this, this piece of content has an A grade or a B grade or a C grade. So that's a very easy way to see that piece of content is SEO optimized. The problem with all these tools is that, uh, yeah, they all cost money. So in the end, you may end up with a, with a bill of $400 a month on subscriptions for, for tools. Yeah. Yeah, it adds up quickly. It absolutely adds up quickly. So how do I actually know that my SEO is working? Yeah, so basically the obvious result that you can see is um, getting more inquiries, getting more trials, getting more sales. So you can have, um, you can have a team of SEO experts that are able to track your results or they may not be able to track those results. It depends on what your what your deal with your SEO company is. But those are always signs that your um, SEO is working. Of course, you are going to have um, good rankings for your keywords. So if you are selling pianos and you create a piece of content about how to move a piano, uh, ideally you want that piece of content to rank on page one. So if you see that a page of that piece of content is ranking on page one, your SEO strategy is working. So um, I always recommend that whoever you work with, um, you always agree uh, about having a monthly report. So 
the SEO company can report in metrics such as keyword rankings and traffic, how much traffic you are getting into your website, how long are they spending on your website, how many clicks are you getting every month through organic traffic, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. How many conversions you may be getting, how many how many trials um, are coming from, from people visiting your website, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is there isn't only one way to to know that your SEO is working and yeah if you if you're a big company per, perhaps you have metrics that are more important for for you and those are the metrics that you want to to see the results for so for example if you're an email marketing company probably you say i don't care about keyword rankings i don't care about anything else i only care about trials and conversions and those are the two metrics i want to be reported so yeah, yeah. it will depends a little bit on your on your type of business but yeah eventually is if you are investing in seo you want to see uh, a return on that on that investment so it's more sales for everyone absolutely absolutely so for someone who is just getting started with seo today could be someone who's like a student now and you know getting more and more into the topic or someone who's a company owner already but wants to take it more seriously what do you recommend where they, what, what is start? What, how should they, like, what's the first step they should take? Yeah. So the first step is my advice is start today because if you create a piece of content today, that piece of content is going to help, uh, the piece of content that you may create in two years time. And you don't need to have the perfect website. You don't need to have the perfect design. You don't need to have a website that is super fast, that all the technical boxes are thick, etc., etc. So you can start today and work slowly to make everything everything work together in the future. And if you're a business owner and you don't have time or you don't know anything about SEO, you're not good at work. Yeah, so the first step is, my advice is start today. Because if you create a piece of content today, that piece of content is going to help uh, the piece of content that you may create in two years time. Um, you don't need to have the perfect website. You don't need to have the perfect design. You don't need to have a website that is super fast, that all the technical boxes are thick, etc., etc. So you can start today and work slowly to make everything, everything work together in the future. And if you're a business owner and you don't have time or you don't know anything about SEO, you're not good at writing, you will have to hire someone. Then we go back to the question, how can I hire someone? Um, be very realistic about um, the money you're going to be spending every month. So if you work with an agency and you pay $500 a month, uh, you may get one day of work from the agency every month because those are the rates. So if you have a low budget, probably you are better off working with a um, with a freelance yeah. who is going to be able to to work more on your website. And yeah, when it comes to SEO, budgets can be very different. It can go from hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars a month, or even more, because it all depends on um, how much content it is created, how many members of the team. I want to be looking after your website, whether you want the SEO team to implement the changes or you want to uh, work with a developer. So there are many different things that can, that can change how the SEO uh, work is going to look like. But my, yeah, my advice is start today. You don't have to go big, just start small and be consistent. And yeah, you will see, you will see results, even if they are small, even if it's just ranking for a specific query and starting um, increasing the visibility of your brand and start seeing visitors um, going to your website. Absolutely. Yeah. Starting today is, is the most important and the second most important problem What you mentioned is consistency. So as we tend to say, consistency is really key and that's what SEO benefits from a lot, right? So thank you so much for everybody for listening. David, where can people find you if they want to get in touch with you? 
Yeah, so the best way is if you um, visit my website, trustyourbrand.co.uk, you can find out a bit more about what I do and you can find my contact details there. So yeah, I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Even if you just have a question about something specific, I'll do my best to try to answer it. Awesome. Any final words of wisdom about SEO? Um, yeah, words of wisdom. Um, often you will hear it takes between six and 12 months for an SEO strategy to, to work, for SEO to work. It doesn't have to be like that. So my advice again, start today and you may see results sooner than, than you would expect. That was an important point. Thank you so <laughs> much, David. It was a pleasure having you here. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye, Pamela. Bye. Bye.